The sage is Morpheus. The master of all masters is Neo. So if you're the sage, that's got to be infinity. What that means is you're the best sage that you could be. And you gotta get to a certain age. And then you're being the best sage that you can be. Best waves. Happy, uh, happy Easter, happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, happy birthday, happy uh, Buddha's birthday, uh, happy Osho's birthday, happy enlightened people's birthdays, and happy all the sages' birthdays, happy all of your birthdays to you and yours, and happy Christmas. I want to ask you something about Santa Claus. Would Santa Claus be a good lifeguard if the elves were drowning in the cold, uh, in the cold Arctic waters? Does Santa own a sauna? Does you know? Does Santa sweat? What does Santa eat? Why is he so fat? Um, and with this guy being so melodic and having so much power and going to each and every, you know, each each and every great family this Christmas and Halloween. Where does he get his power from? Where does he get his strength from when he's always so fat? Like, does he just work out that one day and come out uh, randomly as, like, some really muscly guy? Like, how's he going to fit? It's all Is it all magic? This guy's just so magical that he just walks up? Or that this guy's so magical that he can stay at that weight and have as much power as someone who was really big? Like, does Santa go fishing, catch fish, eat the fish, you know, because 
because Santa is pretty much saying he's gonna give you like a fish. He's gonna give you uh, if you're a, if you're a bad boy or girl this Christmas, he's gonna he's gonna put a uh, he's gonna put uh, some he's gonna put some uh, what does he put inside the he gives all the bad presents. Oh, you what's it what's it what's it what what does he put? He puts um burnt firewood inside the uh, for you guys who have bad bad presents or something. What's with that? How big is this house? I just want to know. Is it some kind of magical house that he always goes to? Or is he always in the factory? Saying you guys work, or is he always doing his work? He's always working, that's why he's so fat. Eating, working, and checking your lists. That must be why he's so fat. And then magically, punk possessed on Christmas, and all the elves help him. Uh, he's so fast that it's just there. Poor good old Santa Claus. Actually, Santa Claus was there was a real Santa Claus on the earth, and his name was Saint Nick. Saint. He was a saint, so a carrying thing is a saintly thing to do. So you, most of the, the Western culture identifies itself with the Bible, which is saintliness. And all these monks, a lot of them are called saints as well. That's what. In in the other cu cultures, you don't really see saint the the word saint so much because you see the word monk in it, and it's or you see the name guru or the Hindu or all the things in India, pretty much, if you know what I mean. So, with the saintliness, we're bringing peace to the world, we're giving money to the world, but we're giving money to ourselves. On Christmas, all if, if, if for one Christmas, instead of giving all our kids presents and we gave all the money that we spent on Christmas on our own kids, if we gave that money to, the, to all the starving kids, then we would save poverty in actually one year. And then just give your kids like the presents that they want instead of always giving them what you think they should need in their life or for instance um if a kid just asks you for miracles if he's, if, if he goes to santa what's miracles and then we all save the world or he asks for some mysteries and you give him some mysterious presents that he didn't ask for that you can uh, connect them with what you want them to connect with in, in, in that way. So even with us we have a personality, we have a responsibility. Same way Santa Claus has a responsibility, personality. I'm sure that this guy Santa Claus is an enlightened Buddha at this point too. Because this guy was a, an actual guy named Saint Nick. And this guy's gonna become a Buddha and he, he's gonna tell everyone to save Christmas and all he's gonna tell everyone that there is some kind of presence inside uh, every thing or every culture that you can see and depict in your own positive way that's what with positive thinking and you have to have positive perception with a positive perception you have to have a clear mind and that's why I'm preaching all this meditation and all this awareness and all this type of stuff All the money that we spend on every celebration, no type of thing, winds up with us just giving ourselves at one po certain point in time the money that we save or the money that, that we travel with. So even with all these responsibilities said, like, who is going to organize anything like that out of saintliness? That's why I don't really see as these people asking and begging for money all the time like there's no no one approaching it in a mystical way which was pretty much what all the mystics did they came and they gave you all these all these people these styles these crazy styles these crazy anomalies these crazy knowings out of nowhere and these people just knew and some some of them had the right circumstances around them and others were in charge of other times and other time periods 
So you got someone that who who did make an impact the same way people are making impacts all the time. Someone like Bodhi Dharma, who was who is of the caliber of the, these people, and it, it actually done like miracles and stuff, has walked across the water and actually resurrected the the overlooked type of people that you don't really see, but you, you see a person like Jesus who's more saintly, and so he's making an impact on a bartering in a bartering way, trying to I don't know if it's trying to raise people's equanimity or raise people's equality or raise people's um, equity it's just that um, when you're telling people that the meek are going to make it to heaven. The meek inherit the, hang the kingdom of heaven. That would that would persist to me mean to these people in poor, starving countries that this can be heaven. This earth can be heaven for them. So that's what that's talking about. So it's easy for us to be saintly and to bring the actual world of heaven to these people in this life you know in our life but it's very different when there's so many distractions around and you know cuz someone like the Buddha who where people there was no television no cameras in order to see this guy he had to, to have ma massive people and he had to be massively famous and for people to approach him all the time everywhere he went So for us, with all these distractions, it's hard to recognize someone who is from outside of the stagnant state without all of these distractions. Which is pretty much the, the problem with, with the saintly saving or bringing our universal consciousness to save one big thing where it dearly, dearly depends on it where we dearly, dearly care, but, but the thing is that there's so much dearly, dearly careful things and dearly, dearly things that we need to care about that are all around. But one thing to heal all of these things nowadays is to bring more mystics, so... The, the average public isn't going to say or bring each other together to bring more mystics in the sense of their being but rather they would rather see something that they could just see because they can't feel the presence of the being because the presence of the being was what you can't display through a computer screen or a TV screen now I would be dedicated and I would be willing to create some kind of demonstration inside a 4D uh, layer where I can talk to people on a high level as something like a lecture in a formal setting where I can have uh, the world's limits to me and then then at that point we will be uh, distancing ourselves into the future very much quicker in a way that we can perceptionally imagine so if anyone's willing to do that just you can just contact me you can just make some comments you can contact me and then we can make that happen and I'll be dedicated towards it and to it because it's easier to express things in ways that are beyond music so with Zora the Buddha what Osho Zen Master High Priest is saying what he's saying is that this man expressed his own journey with his dance, with his song, with his presence, in a way that cut through most um, people that you're used to, so someone that actually shakes the ground in a way that you can understand what he's saying beyond the words, because the mind is what's starting to limit us, it's starting to limit us. It's starting to, to keep us back from uh, getting c c connected to the olden times too uh, as well with these times that we have here 
and even with the East, it's slowly becoming more like the new times. And it's not about the tradition of the old times, but it's to bring our own old times into these new times so that we can get these things, these type of things to happen. And, uh, you know, this, this is just what I see from from my observings through my life and my experiences. So when I'm saying these type of things, I'm only saying them out of my experiences. So we need more Bodhidharmas and we need more Osho Zen Master High Priests. Don't get me wrong. But we also need that third thing, that fourth thing, that nine and eleventh thing, that seven thousand thing to make our life the best for us in this life that we are living now. It's true. And we can potentially be contacted and intact with this earth and the solar system and this universe galaxies depending on our earth's consciousness now the earth has its own consciousness that everyone likes and loves whereas because the earth you can't really do s stupid things to it just living a regular life but the consciousness that we have as humans that we're putting out into the, the air and it's mixing with the Earth's atmosphere and it's our thoughts are kind of like a, a separate world c disconnected from this world that is the, the universe and the galaxy. It's almost like we need some galaxy pads, you know, and someone needs to make some kind of technology even, some galaxy pads so that we can understand this thing really quickly. But it's, it's, it's not so. That's why uh, Osho Zen Master High Priest always praises Zorba the Buddha. He always wants Zorba the Buddha. He wants someone that can dance and, and tell you uh, as a mystic. So if you could tell, if you could tell the experience, if, if you understand the experience, or if, if you didn't know mine, that you can just, you can express it in that type of way. Is what is what is what is what you know it. it Whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen, and what everyone's gonna say, and what everyone's gonna do, and it's what's gonna be done. Because that's what's gonna happen. But at any certain time, the, the feeling of the expression of this now can also alternate the uh, immediate future close to us. And, it, and at any point in time, it can be swayed. We can't, we can't time travel, of course. So this life is only for us, and this life is for us, and this is the life that we can live in. So, in order for us to, to bring that heaven to these these poor people, uh, the meek will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Uh, we are going to have to be, act and actually be the kingdom in heaven inside ourselves, inside our own temples, inside our own bodies, inside our own minds, inside our own beings, inside our own spirits, inside our own soul. To be this soul, to be old souls. So the responsibility of the old souls is to teach the new souls too. So there's always some type of uh, work going on. There is work, but animals don't really work. Animals enjoy what they're doing. Like, so as we as humans, we should never be questioning what we're doing. We should never hate our work. We should never be complaining about our work. We should never be complaining about our lives either. Certain things happen, but those things should have been hap happening uh for somebody else, like whoever that is, should have already paid off those dues of those karmic debts in this life, because this life is an opportunity for that. Especially with all this, with everything available to us in in this time and day and age, where we can eat like kings, see like kings, see like princesses. And we should all be queens. You know, queens care about everything. Queens, on, on some deep level 
can be forced to care about everything and even that consciousness enough can can help us but even 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 that is is getting into a twist even that is getting it, 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 mixed and mingled with, with with the other other things so from that from then on uh the mind starts to come and a whole bunch of people and a whole bunch of thoughts uh, mix and mingle together in, in, in a world separate of other worlds that are unperceivable just because it's not provided in the right way by the right people in, in the right circumstances all the time and for us in this life it's, it, it's going to be difficult but it can it can easily happen as well the consciousness and the universal consciousness can be swayed in any which way uh, very quickly for instance if, if, if a meteor were to hit the earth that was very big if that meteor hit the earth and it was very big then everyone on the earth would know it and that consciousness could easily quickly move it but in order for us to break our own egos and to consciously move it ourselves we would have to act and believe in ourselves that it was that as if a bunch of atom bombs and nuclear war has hit where everyone would come together and hold hands at that point and that when people come and hold hands at that point you need somebody to guide and at that point the people that are, are supposed to be there to guide are, are not going to be available because everybody is so uh, confused with all these distractions but if we can globally, as a community, as a community that doesn't speak almost, if because if we can become connected and we can do our jobs the best, then for this time and age that we represent and for the times and the ages that were represented in the past, we can all come together and actually make that holding hand come uh, together without other people breaking off from the branch. But with the, with all these distractions, I'm like like I'm saying, it's probably not gonna happen. It's just wishful, dreamful thinking. But that wishful, dreamful thinking is the real message. Is what I'm saying. It is the real message. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what everyone else does. It's the people that I guide, the people that I touch. And what I mean is everyone. I mean everyone we need to all come together we need to hold hands but those lines on the maps are what's holding us from living in the same place we can't unless there's a whole bunch of houses right directly on the lines on the outside of the countries it's gonna be difficult But don't don't go don't you dare go trying to build your house on two countries, okay? Let's have some respect for other people, let's have respect for the other people, let's have respect for other countries, let's have respect between each other so that we don't have to question living or putting your house there. And that'll be the right time to put your house there. Otherwise don't even don't even try. You know, don't even try. I'm not condem I'm not condemning you, but don't even put the effort to make your house on between the borderlines of two countries. Let's, as a people, as the people, be the people, right? The people of Earth, man. The people of Satsang. The people of Truth. The truth bringers. The real people of this life. This life is all we get. We're only a grain of rice. Let's make it grow to a whole rice paddy field. Let's plant some seeds here and there. At least. I'm Bodhidharma. Talking to you live on Amazon. Thank you.